Good morning. Well, I'm going to bring you in on a trick that I was told about. I want to give a shout out to Kyle Michael on YouTube, uh, Facebook's YouTube uh, you know, site. I posted a picture of me struggling to center my tail stalk you know, using the turning the bar method and uh, I got it perfect I got you know within two tenths over a foot long but it took me a while and stressed me out and I kept on going the wrong way the main problem is you know what I discovered this is a brand new machine so I think this is the problem that you know the paint in the body filler the primer they put on this machine is so thick you can see right around the edges around the bolt which chipped off trying to adjust it when I'd go turn down the bolts the thickness of everything it would move no matter what adjustment you make I was having problems I was going too far or wouldn't go at all and that's so I adjust it more than move so what I did this morning I got a perfect yesterday but he gave me a tip Kyle did and I wanted to see how it works so I took this all apart again cleaned all the sides, got all the adjustment screws, lubed, and what you should, what I should do is clean up with all the bolt sides. Still a lot of body fill. It's shitty. I mean, it's really sad. But I got it so where I could adjust it, move it, tighten it without it moving. And he, he made the adjustment using a coaxial indicator. So this morning I had this all pot, cleaned it, lubed it, and I start from scratch again. Well, first, I did test it before I took it all apart, and I tested it with my chuck into just the internal of the tailstock. Then I put a live center, a dead center, and then I took off the chuck and put a ER32 call it holder in with the draw bar. And uh, I got this chuck centered pretty good. So I believe the number with the chuck was right on. And on the coaxial indicator, I was getting 35 ten thousandths of an inch uh, out on the chuck. And then I swapped over. I did the tail stalks, the dead center, live center, and they all read the same. So I, I believe that every, you know, the tail stalk internal is good. The live center and the dead center all machine good. Then I put the call a chuck on there swept it and it was width and a half of ten thousandths so the chuck is perfect uh, the er32 china call it is pretty damn good within you know half a ten thousandths of the chuck so once i proved what i did yesterday match the numbers i was getting when i was reading i was happy with what i did but i want to see how easy this setup was so I, took, like I said, took it all apart, reset it, and I got this thing. It di I didn't get much better. Uh, I only now I'm down to twenty-five ten thousandths of an inch. I only gained a ten thousandth between the two ways of doing it. But this way is so much better. It's unbelievable, easy, quick. Uh, it's it's mind-boggling how much time it saves. So that's why I'm making this video because it's a trick. I think. It, I, maybe everybody knows and I'm you know I'm not a professional so I didn't know this trick so I want to get it out there if you online your tail stock this is the way to do it so basically it's as simple as mounting it whatever way you want to mount it I found in my setup here it doesn't make a difference if it's a chuck or a call it they read the same you know because I know I have this chuck dead and it's perfect but you just mount it in there and like I said, you could either use, uh, just go internal of the tail stock of the taper, or put the live center, dead center in there, and use that. My experience on this one setup is it's always the same. So my dead center is a machine correctly. And you can see the dial there. I'll see if I can zoom in a little bit better here. My camera angle is tough on this setup because I'm in the way no matter where I go. But I can't see the camera when I'm turning the machine, so... And you can see, uh, just 
two and a half ten thousandths of an inch, I should say. That's all I have. Two and a half ten thousandths of an inch. So, so I'm very, very happy. So, you know, figure I'd get this video quickly. I'll do a quick, I'll put a live center in there just to sh show you the, it's the same. This big double bearing live center. I love this thing. All you have to do is adjust the, get the right screwdriver here, adjust the rod on the coaxial indicator. Do the live center, I just go dead on in the center. Move it in. Right down the chuck. Set your zero. At the high spot. And then go. And exactly the same, two and a half. So for me, doesn't make a difference. My dead center is the same exact way. So whatever it's easiest for your setup, as long as you, you know, it's good to check your tools too. So it's probably best to run like I did. I ran every option I had to make sure it all read, read the same. So like I said, a big shout out to Kyle Michael on YouTube's Facebook page. It's an amazing trick. I'm glad I found it out. I wish I found it out before. That's why I think I should have asked Hey, what's the best way to do this before I struggled? But I, I like turning it. It gives you a lot of practice. I need practice on everything I do. So I didn't mind taking the time. I sacrificed one piece of brass that I picked up for cheap money, if any. I don't know if I even paid anything for it, but it's just scrap. So everything I do, I don't mind doing it. It's practice. But this is a great trip. I hope someone else used it. Have a good day. Yep. I figured I'd just bring you back and show you how I zoomed in on the gauge but this is a live center I put in so just in case you didn't know what I was doing there I'm sure you could understand it but I didn't like I said I couldn't see my camera so that's how I'm reading the live center just on the outer edge of the taper that's right where my center drill <laughs> you can see the mark from when I install it so that's it. I figured I'd just bring that back.